Okay, so we have started part two and uh, this is where we left off. We had already UV unwrapped our building. Now we can start uh, the texturing. So if we go to UV, I think we're going to need two UVs uh, for our building. Um, just so, so that it's easier for us to texture uh, these windows. Uh, just slap a different material to, uh, onto them instead of uh, texturing in a, in a different uh, application like Photoshop. So let's go to uh, this tab here. I think it's called the data tab. And I go under UVs. You can see we already have one UV, uh, which is uh, this UV here. Uh, we need a second one. Uh, but for that, we only need to select uh, these faces and hit you, unwrap like that. Uh, so I need these to be on top of each other. So I'll just, uh, let's see, how am I going to do that? So I need to first get the align, all, them to, all of them to rotate in the same direction. So 90. Then I can bring them on top of each other like this. Rotate this 90. Get it to be like that that like that so now if we have a material if we get a, te a texture a window texture it would fit easily on this building so let's uh, do something like that so let's go back to shading you can see our windows are using different materials a different uh, UVs and uh, our walls and the walls are also using different UVs so that means we're going to need uh, two different materials and that uh, each will be assigned to the different IUVs. So let's find uh, some concrete texture. So I'll just go to my uh, directory. Let me make sure the audio is good. Okay, so I'll go to my directory, uh, textures, and find some concrete texture. I'll bring back my image. So I have a few concrete images and I think we're going to be merging or layering, blending them with different textures. Uh, but for now, let's first begin with that. So uh, we can connect the base color and see this is our, our building block. So if you see that uh, your texture is a bit blurry like this, uh, that means that uh, your re the resolution of your image is, is not uh, big enough. Uh, but uh, you can also find textures, other textures that you can layer on top of that uh, s that have more high frequency details uh, to layer on top of this so that, you, so that this image doesn't look that blur blurred. So uh, let me find a texture that I can get here. Let me look at this here. Okay, this is what we are using already. So let me find something else. Concrete. And let me try adding this and see. If I add that and go add, go to color, mix RGB, they mix the two, so I'll just connect this with this, preview this, and see this is still blood, see a difference. Oh, so if we change this to overlay, we are getting a few details in, but uh, they're not uh, that much so let's see if we add mapping to this so this is the preview uh, so we can scale down uh, this texture let me see which texture we're scaling down uh, we need to scale down this uh, the second texture we just added so let me preview this node connect this here and disconnect this Is 
Zoom in a bit, zoom out. So you just need to layer different textures. And see what you get. Let's add uh, this, but I think this is, this has some good detail in, this is some good details. So we can uh, again duplicate this, connect this to the bottom, connect this to the top, preview this. Uh, it's also affecting the color and uh, we don't want that. But uh, let's first, Uh, let's uh, try changing the different blending modes. Let's try multiply. You can also use the slider to change uh, the amount. I think because the building is uh, is going to be viewed from a good a good distance. Uh, this can be enough and uh, so let's add ambient occlusion so input ambient occlusion uh, we need a car ramp to control the, co the contrast so add that connect the ambient occlusion uh, there also make sure you uh, apply you enable ambient occlusion and uh, screen space reflection otherwise the ambient occlusion will not work we also need another mix rgb color mix rgb uh, this the blending mode will be multiply I connect uh, this so this is how the ambient occlusion looks so it just makes the corners a bit darker and uh, we can use this contrast to make the corners even darker and uh, if this is not uh, enough for you you can also use the ambient occlusion uh, distance here change it uh, to get even more pow powerful results like that now you can also add a convert mask node and change uh, change the operation from add uh, to uh, to power. You can use this also to control uh, the amount like that. Uh, this will give you better results than using this here, because you can see that uh, this gives will uh, will just give you a lot of dark areas. It will make the corners too dark, so I'll just move that and uh, control control that directly from here using the power node but uh, we're losing a lot of contrast again let me that's why I think I need uh, this also you need to make sure that uh, increase this factor I think that's why this was less powerful so don't want it to be overpowered so we need to multiply this onto the results which we got from here. So you can see this is what we have so far. Make sure you're saving. Uh, so from this, uh, this can be connected directly to the color node. And, uh, this is the results we are having. Uh, let me change this to a sun. I'll make it face, make the sun face uh, our our building. Uh, if you are in dev look, uh, you won't see the results of the sun. The, uh, the sun will not affect uh, your scene because under shading, the lights are uh, switched off. So you need to switch that on uh, so that uh, the sun affects your building. You can see. So this is off on or you can just go to rendered mode uh, but for that you uh, to see the results better you you need to add a background image or add an HDRI, uh, an HDRI image uh, to have something in the background so to, to light up your environment so I'll find some I'll use this uh, since we're going for a night scene 
you may want to use a night HDR image, maybe something like this. But uh, since we are still in the early stage of uh, making this, I'll just go back to the old image. So where is this? Uh, which has better lighting, I think. So let's go back to this. Uh, we need a, a roughness map for this. So I can just, uh, I'll just get it directly from the diffuse. So I'll add a color ramp to control the contrast. Connect that directly there. Now if we preview this and see how this looks, uh, we need to connect that to the roughness. And uh, if we preview, you can see how that affects our building. Uh, but right now it's too reflective. Uh, you can even see uh, the sun in the in the concrete reflection, uh, which would not happen in the real world. So I'll just make that less reflective by reducing the darkness in this arc ramp, uh, something like that. And I will also need a normal map to, to add some bumps here. So for that, again, I will be using the same node uh, from here because it has all those details in. So I'll just go in, convert, sorry, vector bump, connect this uh, to the height. Uh, since we don't have a normal map, we're just going to convert whatever we're getting here into a normal map. We're using this uh, bump node. So we can connect this to the normal and see the results we are getting. Uh, but uh, this is too powerful, so we reduce the, the strength to about point one, maybe point zero five. Hmm. We can also increase the contrast between these. that looks much better and uh, even better uh, from a distance so let's work on the windows so you're going to need a few image textures uh, for windows uh, you can just do a google search for that and see what you get uh, let me find uh, some that i've already downloaded here Okay, let me have those prepared and uh, we can come back in part three and uh, start adding those textures in.